All right, so welcome to our meeting. I'm gonna first turn this over to Marianne Quinn Looney. She's gonna talk about CART initiatives. And then after that, we're gonna turn it over to our Rhode Island team to talk about self-employment. Thank you so much, Carrie, for this opportunity. Um, FAU CARD has several different initiatives going on um, addressing underrepresentation um, uh, of children in autism and representation of Blacks, Hispanics, and then also girls. So maybe some other time we could do a presentation on girls. But, to, uh, but today, um, um, we have a presentation by Rose Jean. Rose is a graduate assistant assigned to FAU CARD. She's working on the DD grant and would really like to petition each of you to participate in this grant. Um, many of you are able to participate either as an ESE um, staff member or um, as someone with an early childhood background, or perhaps you know someone, um, uh, a black parent um, that has a child with autism. So Rose, do you wanna go ahead and give an overview? And, and Rose will also be providing the links in the chat box so that you can access that um, during the meeting or after the meeting. Thanks, Rose. Oh. Absolutely. Again, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rose Jean. I am the research assistant. I'm super excited to have you all in and have your attention as well. I do not take it for granted. Um, FAU Center for Autism and Related Disability, um, also known as CARD, serves over 6,100 individuals with autism spectrum disorder uh, related to disabilities and their families um, residing in Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast. Um, so I think at this time, oh, if I can get shared uh, sharing capabilities, um, I wanna share with you all a flyer um, that I'm getting ready to just kind of go over um, and share with you all. Um, the DD Grant Research Study has see, uh, seeks to understand how black children becomes identified with ASD and the underrepresentation of black children in autism. The information that is learned through this study will assist FAU CARD with um, it will assist FAU CARD staff in supporting parents by obtaining accurate and timely identification and developing parents and educators and healthcare provider training to facilitate the identification process. So within your screen right now, you should find this flyer um, and I will also share the flyers within the chat. Uh, we are currently conducting surveys, focus groups and targeted interviews with exceptional student education and early intervention directors and staff, school and clinical psychologists, healthcare providers, faith-based representatives and other stakeholders deemed appropriate for examining experiences in early identification of autism in black children. FAU CARD is now actively recruiting ESC teachers, early intervention, staff and directors, healthcare providers and faith representatives to provide information on their views of black children that become identified with ASD. The study is recruiting up until October 31st, 2021, and it's entirely virtual. Um, our next focus group is actually happening tomorrow, Wednesday, October 20th at 6 p.m. And that is uh, for Black families from the, Treasure Coast, um, from the Treasure Coast area. So if you have anyone that may be interested, we'd uh, be interested. Um, and we'd also like to share with you some of the surveys in the chat right now. So if you can take up just a few minutes, should take you maybe five to 10 minutes where you can complete the survey. And I will also attach uh, a few of our flyers uh, where you can share that with some of your families, um, with some of your coworkers. And I just thank you all so much for your time and all the great work that you're doing in your division. I think together we're all making a difference. So hope you have a great day. Thank you so much, Rose Jean. All right, and next up, Mary Ellen. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to have Sabrina uh, take a few minutes to explain what she's doing. Um, we were very fortunate. We have not received any additional funding in over eight years from the state. And so we, um, th that requ this requires us to look at other foundations and funders. So Sabrina was hired out of a foundation um, a private foundation that has um, provided us an opportunity to have someone that's bilingual to be able to really serve the Spanish speaking parents. Um, so we have over 450 families that um, have that need in the past. We've only had a part-time person. So we're very excited to have Sabrina on board. Um, and Sabrina, do you wanna give an overview of some of the things that you're doing? And Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. 
I look forward to meeting each of you. My name is Sabrina. I am so excited to be part of the FAU part and card team and to be running this initiative for Hispanic, the Hispanic community and providing support, which is much needed. Um, research does, does show that Hispanics are 60% underrepresented in autism. And there is a hesitancy to get diagnosed. Children are getting misdiagnosed and late diagnosed. So I'm trying to focus on early intervention. I would love to also add my flyer to the chat. If any of you have any families um, in need of support, please feel free to reach out to me. We are also holding trainings for practitioners and doctors in the area, as well as the Treasure Coast. Thank you very much. And I hope all of you have a great day. Thank you, Sabrina. You guys are doing such great work and congratulations on your funding. Um, so we're going to now transition in the spirit of Disability Employment Awareness Month. Um, we have Sue Babin from the Rhode Island Developmental Disabilities Council here, and she's going to share exciting information about what Rhode Island is doing with self-employment. Uh, they have a business incubator program uh, that's aimed to cultivate economic inclusion for people with disabilities as valued business owners who contribute to the growth of Rhode Island's economic development. Uh, she's joined by Katie, a business owner, and her mom, Claudia, to talk about Katie's business, Cheetah Greetings. So Sue, take it away, and I'm going to share my screen here and try and drive the best I can for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, what a great, diverse group you have, Carrie. I'm very impressed um, with the people that are on the call and just the range of different um, supports that are available out there. Um, and I had said earlier, my family's had a, a home over in Boca. In fact, yesterday I had my Boca sweatshirt on. I should have thought to put it on for today, but I'm a big fan of that whole big area. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about um, a project that we've been doing here in Rhode Island for probably around 11 years. Um, I used to work for the State Office of Developmental Disabilities. I ran the Quality Assurance and Special Projects Office. I was the, wa the waiver liaison. Um, and then I went to work for the Developmental Disabilities Council. And when I first started working for the council, it was actually Claudia Lowe, who came to me, who's gonna speak a little later on with her daughter, Katie, who came to me and said, you know, traditional employment just really isn't working out for Katie. She has this real interest in music, um, and she'd like to start her own business. Where do we get resources? And I said, heck, I don't know, but I'll find out. Um, if we could go to the next slide. So we started um, in uh, uh, figuring out about resources that might be available. Initially, we started to go to the Office of Rehab Services. And I, I know you got some VR people on the line here. Our VR people were not too fond of funding anything initially. They're still putting up a little bit of a fight, but it's much easier right now because they were saying, you know, how do we know that people are really interested in business development? And my response back to that was, well, how much money do you guys actually spend in VOC assessments? And, you know, the answer to that is it's actually a large pot of money and those assessments don't necessarily result in, in employment for um, uh, anyone. It may tell you some areas of interest. Um, so today, we're not, we're, what we're going to talk about, we're going to tell you a little bit about our self-employment project, what our goals are. I'm going to talk about why we think self-employment is a way to go with people, no matter how old people are. And I know you have some EI people on the line, and I think that it's never too early for families to, to be thinking about the financial futures of their son and daughter. And clearly, you'll see that when you talk with, uh, hear from Katie and, and Claudia going to give you a project overview of, of the different components of our project. Then you're going to actually hear from Katie and Claudia how they started the business, what it is, what it's about, how participating in our business development series has helped them. Then we'll, I'm going to flip it back to me again. I'm going to go through some quick lessons that we've learned in the five years that we've actually been doing self-employment. Um, and then our next steps, um, which are really big. We think big here in the smallest state in the country. Um, so our primary goals are to build, to continue to build a self-employment business incubator. 
that will provide entrepreneurship education and ongoing business support to assist people with disabilities and others to develop and grow successful new businesses in Rhode Island and improve their financial futures. I think the key thing about our project that makes us stand out, and you're gonna hear about it as I speak, is the ongoing business support. There's lots of states that are doing entrepreneurship classes, and that's a valuable piece, but it's the ongoing support that people really need in order to be successful business owners. And we'll tell you about the things we're doing and the things that we plan to do. And then secondly, to cultivate economic inclusion of people with disabilities as valued business owners, contributing to the growth of Rhode Island's economic development. And we do that through a lot of public pu uh, publicity about each individual person in their business so that the general public gets to see people as business owners. Um, next slide, please. Well, okay, so why self-employment? We have a lot of people that go out on interviews and never seem to get the job or the traditional employment that's available for people just doesn't meet their needs. And so we decided to go this route mostly because of Claudia and two other parents that actually came and said, you know what, it's just not working with traditional employment. And people, our family members have a specific interest or a hobby that we think we can turn into a business. Um, so why self-employment? Well, it's for people to learn skills to make money at something that's meaningful to them, something that they have a real passion for. Um, each person attains their ideal conditions of employment and they do what they love. This is probably the best example of person-centered planning that there is out there because this is an area of employment interest that the person has. Um, you get to be your own boss. You can determine your own work hours versus time that somebody else sets up for you. You can decide where you want to work um, and work w exactly where, where, what, where your choice is. You can work at your own pace. You don't have to answer to someone else. Um, and we have people that are making anywhere from as little as $400 all the way up to people that are making well over $100,000 a year um, with their businesses. So there's the range there of how successful you want to get with your businesses. It definitely increases people's self-esteem and builds a stronger sense of dignity. When people have that business card that says, I'm a business owner, and right on day one in our very first class, we say, you all got to get, when you introduce yourself, you need to say, hi, I'm Sue Baven and I'm a business owner. We get people to say that. And there's a sense of pride in that, that people have. Um, clearly having your own business improves people's financial futures and it can build their financial security. So to us, it just kind of makes sense. We're really excited about what we've done. And in these five years that we've been doing this, we're working with well over a hundred people statewide. So that's a pretty good. Um, and we just got a word a couple of weeks ago for, for some continuation funding, which I'll talk a little bit about um, as we go on. Um, next slide, please. So here's a couple of pictures. I'm gonna show you some folks. Um, this is Nikki on the left. So Nikki really likes computers. He likes working with his hands. He had applied at, I don't know how many different jobs, had a really nice resume, would go on, and he's kind of quiet. Um, he's not too outspoken. Um, and so he doesn't do that well on job interviews. And he had gone on a lot of job interviews, but unfortunately couldn't land anything. He also likes to make chocolate chip cookies, which are really good. Um, and so what Nikki says is, uh, I really love making items that people want to buy. I make garden stones and other cement items. I couldn't get a job, so I decided to start my own business doing what I really love. Well, Nick's first um, item, he loves dogs as well, and they have a dog that has a disability. The dog is deaf. And um, the dog was constantly um, tipping over the water bowl. So Nikki came up with an idea. What if I made a cement dog dish? You know, and so now my dog cannot tip over the water bowl. And that was the very first item that he made. And oh my God, so many people wanted it. He was going to pet stores to sell them. He was going to veterinarian um, places to sell them. And he participated in a big event that we have. So now Nick has this business. He's expanded it out to garden stones and other, he's got Halloween creatures going on this month. Um, and you can find him on Facebook under Rock Solid Creations. So that's Nikki. On the right is Rachel. She's an artist and an awesome artist. 
And what she says is you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. I love to be creative with my artwork and have customers who wanna buy my work. She has an item, it's not there up on the screen, but it's a picture of uh, a mother elephant and a baby elephant. It's probably her, her uh, best selling piece of work. And it was commissioned, uh, she was commissioned to paint that in an actual daycare center. So she's very colorful in her work. She also does a line of paintings of, of women that are really phenomenal and interesting. And that's another big selling item that Rachel has. Um, next slide, please. So on the right, we have Kevin. So Kevin says, I love fire stations and firemen. So I came up with an idea that involves my passion and also meets a community need. I sell a snack box filled with items a fireman can grab on their way to a fire at, at, or at any time that they want. So Kevin goes into the fire stations. He's got his snack box. They've given him an official fire shirt. He's got a fire hat. He wears the whole outfit. Um, and he markets this snack box um, in different fire stations in the, area, uh, in the area close to where he lives. So this was definitely something that he had as an interest as a young boy, as a really young boy, like five years old, he was really fascinated by firemen. And so it kind of evolved. Kevin is 30 years old now. So he's doing something that he really enjoys and it actually meets uh, an employer business need in the community and the firemen love him. Um, on the left is Karen. Um, and what Karen says is, I became an author to inspire other children who have a disability to dream big and be happy with who they are. The books I wrote are based on both my daughter and I, who both have Beale syndrome, and we wear AFO leg braces. So her daughter was going to school. She was being bullied by other kids, typical stuff that goes on. Karen had the same um, disability herself, went through some of the same experiences, and decided to turn that into something positive, created these really colorful children's books, which I would love to see teachers buy and read to, to preschool, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, elementary school children um, so that they can become appreciative of people's differences. They're really colorful, they're really great. And Ariana, it's called Ariana's Magic Boots is the name of the book. You can find them on Amazon, which is where she sells them. And she's about to um, uh, produce her third book as well. Um, next slide, please. So here's some of the core components of our project. So as I said, the business development series, um, which is the classes, and we have eight of them, is really our key component. But then it's all this other stuff that's on the right that's really key. If you're going to develop a successful um, entrepreneurship program, you really have to put these pieces in place for people. And we learned this as we kind of evolved with our project. Um, so we have business technical assistance and support, which I'm going to explain each of these in a little bit. Um, we have mini grants um, that are available to people because people need money in order to be able to go out to buy the supplies and support the equipment that they need for their business. I hired a public relations director, a gal, um, Deb Moraes, who owns her own um, um, PR and advertising agency here in Rhode Island. So I've hired her. She has a big piece of our project to promote the individual stories of people, to promote our project, to get people on TV, to get newspaper articles about people. That's really key. Um, and then we have our weekly entrepreneurs forum, which is a um, Thursday afternoon class at three. If any of you are ever interested in, in wanting to pop in, it's three to four wanting to pop in on any of those um, uh, weekly entrepreneurs, put your email address in the chat and I'd be happy to send you um, a link to an upcoming class and you can jump in. And it's just for, usually we have anywhere from 20 to 40 people on the call. Um, and it's people just talking about their business, what they've done in the last couple of weeks um, and hearing new ideas. We typically would have a speaker to talk about a, um, a short um, area of interest. In the last year, we've really focused a lot on social media marketing because COVID has, look at this, it's a Zoom meeting. Whoever heard of Zoom five, four years ago? None of us, right? Um, so now that's all we do every day. Um, and so we talk about using social media to promote your business. Um, next slide, please. So for anybody that comes into our project, um, we start off with the eight business classes. 
it starts with, um, so what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? What is that all about? Second class is on steps to running your business. Then we focus in on target market. Who are you really selling to? Who's going to buy your product or service? Then we have how to write a killer elevator pitch, which is really important. How to write a good business plan, um, social media marketing, um, regular marketing, accounting and finances and community resources. Those are all of the classes. I don't think I list, left, skipped anything, Claudia. Let me know if I did. Um, each person that's in the class gets an opportunity to get a personal staff mentor. And I've hired four family members, Claudia is one of them, um, that actually are the staff mentors for each individual person that's in the class. Um, we also have peer mentors that are people with disabilities. And I have 12 to 15 business advisors that are people that we use to teach any of the business classes that any one of the people that are in our program can access for some personalized support. So what kind of support do they get? Well, they get marketing, business planning. Say they wanna develop a Facebook page. Um, how are you gonna promote your business if, it, if you don't have a business card or a Facebook page or Instagram or some side, uh, kind of a website? We do all of that with people. Um, we utilize a benefits planner. She's also part of our training and classes. Um, we help people to produce their own business logo or a business card. We print them up. That's all paid for through the project. And I already mentioned about the local news stories. Oh, we also, we had one of our guys um, is a podcaster. And so now we've hired him to develop individual podcasts on different people that are in our project. And with those podcasts, people can take them and put them on their Facebook page or their website. Um, and we put it up on our uh, website, which I'll list in the chat in a little bit. The peer mentors, uh, I think we have three or four of them are folks with disabilities that have been involved with the project for over three years and are available to help and support any of the people that go through the program. Um, people can get a mini grant, it can be as little as $250, it can be as much as $2,000. It depends on how serious people are with their business and what they need to buy. It could be supplies, it could be materials, it could be they wanna join a chamber of commerce, it could be they want a big piece of equipment. I don't care as long as it's gonna help them to build their business. We complete the um, personal staff mentors that I ha hired along with myself, help people to complete a personalized business portfolio. That way they can go to rehab services and say, here's my business portfolio. I need a grant to buy additional equipment, or they can go to a bank for a small loan. Um, the business portfolio includes their elevator pitch, their business team, their marketing strategies, their business plan, their business financial projections. All that stuff is in the business portfolio. Um, I already mentioned about the Weekly Entrepreneurs Forum. Another thing that's really creative that we've been able to collaborate with one of our families that actually runs a business. She's actually in two hours, she's a finalist in a, in a big pitch contest that's going on here in Rhode Island. She's one of five people. They're the only uh, folks with disabilities that are in the, uh, as a finalist. And she has um, organized some outside vendor marketplaces that started back in April and are going all the way through November in different locations throughout the state where there's anywhere from 70 uh, business owners up to 100 business owners. And we usually have between five and 10 folks with disabilities that are in those marketplaces. So now we've, we've helped people to actually create a location where they can sell their products. We, we supply the tent, the table, the weights, all that stuff they need to just show up and sell their stuff. Um, four years ago, we created an event called Small Business Saturday Shop RI which is a statewide event um, that's on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. This year, it's November 27th. Nationally, Small Business Sat Saturday is a big promotional event that American Express started to help states to promote small businesses. In Rhode Island and, and pretty much nationally, 95% of businesses in the state are in fact small businesses. And so rather than shop Target and online and Amazon and all of, all of those locations, this particular day is geared 
to promote small businesses. And so Claudia and I actually got together and <laughs> dreamed up this idea of let's rent out the biggest hotel that we can. And we will rent out tables to different entrepreneurs. We'll include people with disabilities. And we have a, a huge success. I have a close to 200 vendors that are going to be in this year's event. Um, we're sold out. We were sold out in 2019 before COVID. We had well over 3,000 people come to that event. And the biggest seller of the day happened to be the gal that I just mentioned that's going to be in the uh, finalist. She sold 50, they sold $5,800 worth of jam. Their business is called We Be Jamming. Kerry met them on the call about a few weeks ago and they sell jams and sauces um, for grilling and things like that. Everything is $8. Imagine a business that sells over $100,000. And her son also happens to have autism and he's really limited in terms of his um, communication skills and in terms of different aspects of the business that he can do, but he does the aspects of the business that he can do. He can greet the public, he can put the labels on the jaws, he can be at some of these outside marketplaces. Um, so um, it works for them. So we're really excited about this year's Small Business Saturday because it is gonna be in person. Last year we did a virtual event, didn't wasn't as successful as clearly the ones that are in person. But again, it's another opportunity where people with disabilities can get out there and market their business. Um, we have huge press. If you just Google that Small Business Saturday Shop RI, you would find numerous um, newspaper articles um, over the years about that event. We've had huge press. We've been on tele every television station, just about every uh, small newspaper picked up a story on us over the years. And it, it, what's really interesting is when reporters come to that event, they don't see people with disabilities. In fact, nobody sees people with disabilities. They see business owners with quality products. And there isn't anybody that walks out of that building that doesn't have a shopping bag filled with some unique things to buy. So that is an event that any state could replicate. And it, we're really, really excited about how that has grown. Uh, a little overwhelmed this week because we, we ended up being sold out before we thought we were, but that's a good thing, right? Um, and lastly, on this page, um, we've created a speakers bureau with the people that have um, participated in the business classes. I have 15 of them so far, um, and they each have their own PowerPoints. You're going to hear from Katie in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, each one of them will talk about their business. And basically what we do is presentations like what we're doing today or speak to um, uh, consumer advocacy groups or family groups or business owners or whoever wants to hear us. Um, and people get paid for their presentations um, around the state. So we're really excited about the Speakers Bureau and how that has grown. Um, next slide. All right. So here we go. So now you guys are going to meet. That's Katie on the left and Katie and her mom, Claudia, on the right. And they're going to tell you a little bit about um, Katie's business. Cheetah Greetings. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, hi. I, I am Katie Lowe. I am doing um the owner. owner of oh to the Kinev. Next slide, please. Okay. okay. What is the greetings? I I make what say personalized personalized. Cause for a lot of different occasions. Okay. <clears throat> Can you see that right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So uh, I said, um, yep. May my my cause are uh, made um, using using pattern. Put in cardstock, cardstock, and stamping. stamping. Okay, next slide, please. Here you go. And what are these some examples? Okay, what does it say? Is it a. Yes, some examples of my cards. Is it big? Right? It's about of my cards. What kind of cards are those? Is this right here? Yeah, what is it? What kind of cards are those? Is it a. A. Adoptions. Adoption cards. 
cut. And what is what kind of cut is that one? Is it a horse? No. What is that? Was it a dog? <laughs> Pet. It's in my face. Yep. And the next one is also adoption, right? Adoption, yes. Yep. Okay. So a portion. A portion of sales. Oh, sales from my adoption. Adoption. And, and pet. Yeah. Same thing. Cause, Cause is is donated to the two local local charities. Charities. Okay. Katie did a uh, card this past. Um, oh golly, March was our World Down Syndrome Day, March twenty first, mm -hmm. um, three twenty one. Uh, as it would have it. And Katie donated um, par a portion of her proceeds to the National Down Syndrome Society and the National yep. Down Syndrome Congress. Mm -hmm. So Katie is what a social, do you remember that? A social enterprise? Is it place, yes. Social enterprise. Okay, so why did you start your business? Okay. As it was, was a perfect, perfect. perfect Employment, employment opportunity to be for me, and, and I enjoy, enjoy making cars and making people, people happy. Nice job. Mm -hmm. I was like liked make cars for my family yeah. and friends and I wanted to turn it, turn it turn it into a, a business. Good job. Awesome. I like belong being being my own boss and making my own what is it? Schedule. It's schedule. Nice job. Okay. So, um next slide. Okay, so Okay. How the small how the small business classes helped you? What did it help you with? So which you've learned what? Okay. Did you learn a so, little or a lot? I've let's see. I've learned. I learned a lot from the classes. Okay. Like mm -hmm. how how to to market market and, and promote promote my business. business. Okay, say so how to use social media. Social media. To promote promote my, my business. Business. And networking. Networking with, with other, other entrepreneurs. That's a big word. Yes. And how okay, how to come up with an elevator. Elevator pitch. And, and this is planned. Nice job. Yes, you. Oh, well, yay. I'll do this one. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> okay, what did you get out of the class? <clears throat> what did you learn from the class? Can we start here? I, I understood. I just did the importance. importance. Is it easier for me to do this? Yeah, please. please. Importance of being, being a, a social. A social Enterprise. Enterprise. To, to give back to my community. Yep. I received a great grant. Grant which which helped helped me, me purchase which is a variety variety of tools to, tools that I use when making my cause nice okay do you have any advice to other people who are going to start their business mm -hmm. what would you tell them to do to what talk to take, the take take the class and the next thing is follow follow your dreams, dreams if you don't try something new you never know how far you can go. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, there we go. Look at that. 
This okay. is what, how to get in touch with you? Mm -hmm. I can do so it. So it's, oh, okay, sorry. Okay, um, Green. Greetings and gmail.com. Okay, not sure what, what is that? <clears throat> hmm? What is that? Cheetah greetings at gmail.com. What is that? You are what? Like the Facebook. No, that's your email address. Do it. Email. And this one okay. with the W's is you are. Uh, Cheetahgreetings.com. That's your web. Web site. And this is Facebook. And Facebook. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to read it. No, that's, right. <laughs> that's too crazy. <laughs> so soon. <laughs> Um, at the beginning, Sue uh, talked a little bit about uh, Katie liking music. So mm -hmm. we did embark upon um, DJing. Yes. Um, it just. Yes. Yes. It's like that. Yeah. It, okay. Right. Okay. It, okay. So um, it didn't pan out as um, much as we had thought. Um, but Katie's always been dabbling. She does, she was doing, she does one gig a month at one of the eight mm -hmm. local agencies in, in Warwick, where we live. And um, we've continued to do that through the pandemic. We do virtual, um, like mm -hmm. a virtual dance party. And Friday night, we're doing what? A, I mean, we're calling it a DJ ghost, ghost party. party. So other people can be the DJ. So we're, yeah. we're giving it like a little spin. Yep. So, and this is um, advocates in action. Okay, yeah, yeah, but you're not doing anything with that. So, okay. how did you tell them how you um, just so they know, uh, why is it called cheetah greetings? Why is it called cheetah greetings? Okay, um, because why? I mean, um, what are you, you wearing, wearing, Katie, today? Yeah, <laughs> I'm wearing um, <laughs> cheetah. Yeah, Katie's the cheetah queen. <laughs> We can't pot pass a cheetah pattern anywhere that we don't have to buy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cheetah. <laughs> so she is a hoot. Yeah, I'm a hoot. All right. Yeah, the the cards are really awesome. You can't, you know, there's a lot of intricacy and cutting to the individual cards that are there. And they reached out to kind of make a niche with these different population groups here. I happen to be an adoptive uh, mom of two kids. Um, and so, you know, they've made a connection there. Um, we try to promote with people the idea of becoming a social enterprise to give back to the community. And so Katie clearly does, even before this business, she's always donating um, a portion of her sales or whatever to um, local groups um, and uh, organizations. And uh, Claudia, for a number of years, was the director of the Rhode Island Down Syndrome Society. So just mm -hmm. a lot of connections, community connections. And, um, you know, one of the reasons why this particular business is doing well is because Claudia is also a very talented um, artistic person. You should see the cards I get from these guys. I mean, it's like I don't even want to throw I don't throw them away. They're they're hanging out. <laughs> and they're really individualized and really, really cool. So take a look at their website, um, you know, and, uh, you know, check out, uh, check out Katie's uh, business. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we could get back to uh, Claude, is there anything else that you want to uh, mention? Uh, I just um, just wanted to reiterate, um, I've seen so many different people go through the classes with a variety of disability, a variety of need, um, a variety of skill level. And the person that we see on class one is not the same person we see on class eight because they have just their self-esteem the self-advocacy, you know, we give elevator pitches and we think, oh, it's an elevator pitch. It isn't an elevator pitch. It's a self, it's self-advocacy is what it is for these guys. And to see the change and the growth, it is by, I mean, I, every single class I see, uh, it's, it's not that I'm amazed because I know these guys are capable, but it just reiterates how really important and what an important role self-employment has for the, for folks with disabilities. Um, it's really nothing that we should ever take for granted. It's, a, it's, they can do it. These guys can really do it. And 
to, to see them talk about their own business when they have, you, you can't see, like they're, they're beaming. Oh. Rachel, looking at Rachel, for example, when we first met Rachel, she was the artist a few slides back. She basically never said boo to anybody. And now Rachel, like we, she, we can't get her to stop talking. She talks about her stuff. She's, she engages with her customers. She's, it's, it's just amazing. And it happens with all the guys. Wouldn't you say so? I mean, absolutely. It, it's yep. just, it's really like, we see things on the news all the time. They have the hot warming stories at the end. And I just think to myself, you have no idea the stuff that we see on a daily, weekly basis with these guys. It's, it's just amazing, just amazing. All right, so just a couple of more slides. Um, and Carrie, I don't know if you can pull up after I do these last two slides, the flyer I sent to you that announces our next round of class, because I wanna like, get, if I could, because I see I got some time to kind of tell Michael's story a little bit. So I think um, since there's a number of people on the line that are connected with autism, they might be interested in hearing it. Um, so some of the things that we've learned, and this is true of anybody, whether you have a, whether you have a disability or not, um, family involvement with the person's business <laughs> really increases the chances of success. No question in my mind about it. Um, if you can't have family involvement, you got to have consistent staff. We can't have a different staff come in each class. It doesn't work that way. Um, so a consistent staff person that will assist the person with their business is really critical. Um, in Rhode Island, and I know you all have this down there, self-directed supports, um, because of the federal governments, um, and Rhode Island was a state that has been in the news because of us not paying minimum wage and people being segregated in sheltered workshops. So we've been under the spotlight for almost 10 years now. And as a result of that, our system is transformed from a segregated system to a, one that's really more of, of community integration. Um, and so um, we see a lot of people choosing self-directed supports, even more recently now because of COVID and the agencies cannot provide the type of, of, of traditional supports that they were uh, providing in-house within their community agencies. So a number of our providers are, are applying to become uh, fiscal intermediaries for self-directed supports. That's so important that the person gets to choose their own staff. The staff gets to work with them on the person with a disability and their family is the boss. They create these job descriptions. So people are doing what they really wanna do as opposed to what may be available within an agency that day. Not to put down any agencies because clearly I've worked in them myself in the past um, at, for nonprofits, as well as the state, as well as um, the DD Council. So I, I know that there's a place for them out there, but with the direction that CMS is trying to move people into person-centered planning and conflict-free case management, self-direction and self-employment are probably the best examples down that road. Um, each, for each individual to have an active and diverse business team. We help people to create that business team. We're a part, those four advisors that I mentioned, I'm a part of, I don't know how many people's business team. People call me up, I haven't seen them in, in three years. So what can I do about? And I say, come to our entrepreneurs class. So we're always there for people um, and, and having a, a, a business team that includes people that have expertise in areas that they don't have is really key. Um, I'm constantly on top of what's going on around the country with other states for self-employment and talking to them and trying to get connected with them so that we can learn from one another. Um, there's at least 10 states that are doing things in the area of self-employment. Um, obviously, we've all learned that you had to adapt to changing environments given COVID-19. What a better way for people to get involved with self-employment and to promote themselves through social media. It was perfect timing for a lot of these businesses in that area. Varied marketing strategies is really key. What might work one month may not work the next month. And so Facebook, TikTok, um, new, newspaper stories, the podcast, all of those different things that we said are really key. Having that PR person has been, essential, has been really um, valuable for us because it's helped the individual business owners to get publicity in the community to it's build credibility for our project. 
And you know what? It's educating the general public that are saying, wow, this is really cool. I want to buy it. They're meeting people with disabilities and getting, you know, to see that people make valuable contributions, you know, just like we all know, but a lot of the people in the general public don't get that. Um, it's a continuous learning process to be a business owner. And so we really try to help people out with our entrepreneurs forum, as well as other opportunities through SBA. What I didn't say earlier is that we started this project in collaboration with the Center for Women and Enterprise and the Small Business Administration in Rhode Island. We actually stole their curriculums. Um, I felt that they were too complicated for people with disabilities. I had some folks go to them and they were like, so I don't understand it. It's over my head. There's too many words on the screen. There's no graphics. So I worked collaboratively with them to um, adapt their material to make it more accessible and it's understandable to people with disabilities. Um, and obviously you gotta be persistent and be flexible in order to run a business. Next slide is, so what are our next steps? Um, we're really getting, we have great press here in Rhode Island. Um, we get funding from the State Department of Labor and Training. We don't get DD funding, interestingly enough, although I haven't give up, given up on that. Um, um, so we get um, our money from the entity in the state that provides job training for any other um, organization out there that's providing job training programs for people that are unemployed or underemployed. And I think that that's significant. Um, we're expanding our project. We have included people without disabilities and without and people with other kinds of disabilities. And so it's been more of an integrated classroom um, opportunity. We have a huge elevator pitch contest ourselves coming up, not the one I mentioned before, but another one with 12 finalists. First prize is $2,000. We also produce monthly cable TV shows on self-employment, different aspects of self-employment. On our website, which is, I'll put it in the chat as soon as I'm done talking, www.riddc.org, um, and you click the tab on self-employment, first thing you're going to see, or one of the first things you'll see is the Rhode Island uh, uh, Business Products and Services Guide. We're in the, pro thank you, Claude, we're in the process of expanding that guide right now. Um, we're working on engaging employers for a business within a business opportunity, um, working through some chambers of commerce. We're thinking about a coffee, five coffee cot businesses that would be located within different businesses. We work with um, other consultants like Doug Crandall and Janine Pavlock from, uh, Doug's from Georgia, Janine is from Massachusetts um, to strengthen our knowledge about self-employment around the country. Um, one of our major goals is to create a national coalition for self-employment. I've been in touch with um, the um, ACL and other federal agencies. We've been on their podcast, their webcasts and webinars um, throughout uh, at least four times in the last three years. So those guys are on board. They've actually funded a big national project um, to Virginia to train VR counselors on self-employment, which is really exciting. Um, and we still continue to research any sort of options that are out there. Somebody mentioned about, found, I think it was you, Mary Ellen, uh, foundation uh, grants um, uh, for supplementing what it is that we do. Um, so those are our big next steps. Um, next slide, I think is my contact information. Um, there's my personal phone number. Anybody can call me at any time. There's our, uh, my emails up there, subaben at riddc.org and the council's website. I don't know if you could find that flyer that I sent you, Carrie. Can you pull it up? Yes, I'm gonna have to stop share. And while we're doing that, does anybody have any questions? You can take yourself off unmute while I pull up the flyer. Okay. We're also going to be doing some work with some high schools um, starting in the next couple of months to teach the basics of entrepreneurial skills um, to younger folks that are in um, transition programs. Uh, because I think the, the skills that you learn with entrepreneurship, public speaking, communication, networking, problem solving, financial media, 
are all important skills for someone to have, whether they move on to start their own business or whether they um, uh, just move on for regular types of employment. So it's gonna be a fun project where the kids will work on um, participating on a couple of different teams and we'll be able to work on developing a business idea for an existing business and come up with some marketing ideas. So our next round of uh, the business classes is gonna start next week um, on Tuesday. And um, the story right in the middle is the one that I wanted to share with you. That's Michael. Um, and Michael is a, a, a business, two, he owns two businesses. One is called the Red, White and Brew Cafe in North Smithfield. And the other business is called the Budding Violet. It's not on this sheet. Um, but Mike used to go to a traditional um, community agency and he really wasn't doing the agency actually, um, uh, let's see, how do I say it nicely? But it, they went under. Um, about two years ago um, for a number of different reasons. Michael wasn't doing anything in that agency. He was just sitting there. Um, we have pictures of him just with his head down, really wasn't engaged, wasn't very communicative. Um, Mike had been in foster care when he was a younger man, younger child rather, um, and was adopted when he was three years old. Um, his mom um, is a very outspoken uh, person. She's another person that I've hired through my project. Her name is Sheila. And um, <clears throat> Michael loves coffee, absolutely loves coffee. And so we got Mike involved in our business classes. He was actually in the first class along with Katie. And <clears throat> Michael said, well, what about a coffee shop, mom? And at the time, mom was, a, was working at the uh, ACI in Rhode Island, um, has a long time career in um, uh, criminal uh, uh, justice or law enforcement and actually decided to retire from her position, take her retirement money, put it all in to help Michael to open up this cafe. Um, if you Google their business, Red, White and Brew, you see numerous stories about them and they've gone national with some of TV coverage. And so what Mike says is, well, you know, why start your own business? I love me my own boss calling all the shots, meeting new people and spending time working on something I really enjoy every day. I decide my own flexible work schedule and I sell what I wanna sell. The class has helped me to learn important skills for problem solving, marketing and business planning. I met other great people with disabilities and others who also own their own businesses. I received a mini grant to buy some equipment um, that I needed for my business. Uh, they ended up buying some specialized um, uh, cappuccino machines, as a matter of fact. Um, I have assistance through my personal support network and my business team. I'm no longer volunteering my time at a job, but instead I have my own business making money and I have definitely increased my income. Michael had uh, volunteered um, for over two years in food service um, positions within some pretty big restaurants in Rhode Island and um, and then was applying for jobs within those restaurants and nobody would give him a paying job. It was really, really discouraging for him. You can see the big smile on his face there because he has transformed into an outspoken advocate on behalf of other young adults with autism and is absolutely phenomenal at his job. Some days he works seven days a week. Um, and if you go into the store, you would definitely meet Mike the Budding Violet is a retail shop that has 50 different local entrepreneurs in there. And about 25 of those uh, entrepreneurs are people from our various classes that sell their various crafts and stuff. So this is a, an example of a flyer that we, um, that we put out. Um, and uh, we're about to start next week. We're about halfway there with our... Uh, enrollment, I think we're going to get there easily. And uh, we run three rounds of the business series um, every year. So that's about it um, for our presentation today. If you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat. I see a lot of great job, Katie's great cards. <laughs> awesome job, Katie. Nice job, Katie. <laughs> um, hi. Do you need to um, live in Rhode Island or is it open to others? It is open. It is open to um, anyone else. We could certainly talk. Okay, thank you. Yep, put your, put your name and 
in uh, in the chat. And actually, we're working with Kerry and um, Sharon um, in helping them to develop this grant proposal that she mentioned in the uh, in the chat line there to hopefully do something very similar to what we have created here in Rhode Island. What do you guys think? Should we bring this to Florida? <laughs> we have a few businesses too, Chocolate Spectrum, uh, Rising Tides, um, and Sensibility that are very similar. Um, I love your training initiative and um, thanks for sharing it, Sue. Thank you, thank you. And for those of you that aren't aware of the Creative Workforce Solutions Summit, I'm going to take this opportunity to share that as well. Um, so we have that coming up in December. Um, here's the flyer. Uh, Unicorn Children's Foundation is hosting the event virtually December 2nd through the 4th. This is our second conference focused on self-employment and creative workforce <laughs> solutions. Uh, we are offering CEUs for um, rehab counselors that um, need CEUs for CRCC or any APD supported employment providers. CESP is um, a CEU for um, the Association of People Supporting Employment First, so that's also employment providers. We are currently looking for exhibitors. You can see some of our speakers from last year um, from all over the world uh, nation. Um, we have some Floridians there in the photo. You could see sensibility there. Um, Devin has a, a design uh, group as well. And then um, we have representation from Orlando and Texas. Um, mm -hmm. Coletti's Cookies, if you're not familiar, you should look them up. They're a really great business. Uh, Cody Clark, a magician. Uh, so we're looking for more exhibitors and um, hoping that you all can attend and learn more about self-employment and please spread the word to families, both that are interested in exploring self-employment. So um, Claudia and Katie, I'm sure you get calls all the time about how someone else can start a business and what mm -hmm. recommendations you can give them. This is really a forum to where families can come and learn about um, exploring this as an option for them. And then also we want, um, you know, businesses like Katie's to come and learn um, some additional, uh, you know, tools and strategies from other business owners. So we're looking forward to everybody attending. Anybody else? Yes, and uh, Mary Ellen, I'd be happy to, um, can you send me the flyer, Carrie? To Yes, of course for the summit. And it looks like um, Sue's email is there if anybody wants to email her directly. And I wanna just say thank you to Sue. I saw um, Sue and, and um, the business owners presenting at a national APSI webinar. And I was just like, I need to talk to her. She <laughs> has it all, you know, when you see something and you're like, we could just transplant that here as is and run with it. So I'm just so happy that she's giving us the time. Um, she's worked really hard, obviously on this project and her knowledge is gold. So uh, we appreciate her and, and thank you to our earlier speakers, uh, Center for Autism and Related Disabilities. Just a reminder, if you um, haven't clicked on those surveys, they'd appreciate your participation in, in their surveys for their research. It's really important for our counties to be able to serve um, everybody that has a child that may be impacted by autism. Yes, I'd be happy, Claudia and Katie, I will send you that information about the conference. Okay, thank you. Anybody have some other questions or comments for the group before we depart? All right, well then if no other comments, I look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you all, have a great afternoon. Thank you. So, Carrie, are you, are you going to call me or do you want me to? Yes, I'll call you, Sue. Okay, great. Thank you. Katie, right. you did a great Thank job. You, Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Thank you, Katie. Bye.